Welcome everyone. My name is David Johnson. I'm professor of finance at Harding University and this video is prepared for my managerial finance students. This first video is the first in the series on introduction to the course. Hopefully you have the notes that accompany these videos so that you can follow along. That will help you to reinforce the concepts, the principles as we go along in complete examples and and fill in blanks. It will also help you, of course, by giving you a document to study later on. First of all, we look at the question, what is finance? You know, if you did a search online or, or in a, a dictionary, you would find a number of, of different definitions, but this is a very simple one, I think, and a workable one, the science of managing money. Finance is arguably the most encompassing of all business disciplines, since to understand finance, you must know about the entire business and, in fact, the entire economy. And of course, I believe you'll see through the conduct of this course here that uh, we will, in fact, integrate a lot of principles and concepts and tools of economics, of accounting, and we'll also at times refer to, for instance, marketing uh, to give us information on sales so that we can evaluate the, uh, the worthiness of an investment. The big picture goes like this. The financial system, also known as the economy of a society, is composed of consumers, manufacturers, and distributors of goods and services. And these groups need money to produce and purchase goods and services. You know the old saying, it takes money to make money. One way of looking at finance is that it's concerned with getting the money people need to produce and purchase the goods and services. So it helps people on both the producing end as well as the consumption end of things. Economists generally assume that households have excess money and businesses need money. In other words, if you think back to a macro or microeconomics course that you've had and you see that chart on the flow of funds, that for the most part it's households that provide investment funds for money. And then, of course, the businesses use that money to provide goods and services to the, to the uh, households. And so there's a flow of money, a flow of resources. So, of course, that's an oversimplification, since at any given time, some people, that is households, uh, have excess money, but others, in fact, need more money. At times, a business will be producing more money than it uh, actually consumes or, or uses. The purpose of the financial system is to see that money flows from households to those businesses that value it the highest, that is, those that can put it to the best use. You know, something we'll see time and time again is that when people have excess funds, they, they put those funds to use. Uh, money sitting idle has a cost. It's what we regard in economics as an opportunity cost. And so investors will tend to save or to invest excess funds in um, either securities or in businesses or commercial activities that will produce a return on their investment. In other words, if you're going to give up use of your money now, you're going to forego consumption um, at, in the present you, to make that available to someone else to use, then you're going to expect a return on that investment. Finance is generally studied in terms of three basic functional areas. You could break this down more if you wanted to, but let's say that, let's go with this. These correspond to three major career areas in finance. First of all, corporate or business financial management. Corporate finance concerns the study and practice of money management within a single firm. Most job opportunities in finance are in financial management. Every company needs a financial manager, even if it's a one-person operation. Financial managers are concerned with the acquisition and allocation of financial resources for a company. That is, what we will see is that uh, the investing and financing decisions are going to be paramount in, in finance. They, uh, financial managers spend most of their time managing working capital, short-term assets and liabilities, cash, receivables, inventories, and of course, the liabilities like accounts payable. Another career area and uh, discipline within finance is financial markets and institutions, banking, for instance. This includes money markets, that is short-term debt markets, and capital markets, long-term debt and equity. Money markets provide companies and governments with liquidity. That is, they allow them with those, the funds that they needed to be able to operate. And capital markets provide the same entities with long-term capital to fund long-term investments. Typical financial institutions are commercial banks, investment banks, insurance companies, credit unions, mutual funds. Um, anyway, some of these you probably wouldn't think about as being financial intermediaries like insurance companies or mutual funds, but they are. 
And finally, investments. Employment is usually found in one of three areas. Sales, like a stockbroker, for instance. Security analysis and portfolio management, which is where you are uh, actually doing technical analysis, for instance, of a company uh, to decide whether it is uh, a good investment prospect, whether that stock is uh, overvalued, undervalued, or appropriately valued. And then financial planning. A lot of opportunities exist uh, for helping people to make better financial decisions in their lives, to plan for retirement or uh, for emergency circumstances like we faced in recent months with this coronavirus pandemic. Typical firms are stock brokerages, commercial banks, investment companies, and insurance companies. Well, let's get back to, I suppose, uh, something I want to help you to do, and that's to see how finance relates to two disciplines you've already studied. You probably have already had macro and microeconomics classes, and certainly you've had as prerequisites to this class, financial and managerial accounting. So let's first of all look at economics and how finance relates to economics. Economics is really the study of decision-making. It's the study of how individuals and groups of individuals allocate scarce resources among competing and practically unlimited wants to achieve the greatest benefit, what economists historically have called utility. Economics then is the study of how individuals and groups of individuals. Those groups of individuals could be, of course, a business, but it could also be a church, a community organization, a family, a social club, an athletic team, or a, a charitable organization. How individuals and groups allocate scarce resources. And uh, if you recall from economics, we define scarcity uh, in terms of the fact that you have to give something up in order to obtain it. That is, something is scarce if you have to give up one thing in order to obtain that, that scarce item. Uh, really, anything of value is, is scarce. Time is, is scarce. There's only so much, so many hours in the day, as we sometimes say. Certainly, money <laughs> is scarce, but also uh, creativity. And all those things, by the way, that money, uh, that money can buy. So uh, we make those decisions all the time about how we allocate our scarce resources among competing and practically unlimited wants. That's one thing that characterizes uh, certainly most of us as humans is that we have unlimited uh, desires. But it's not just for stuff. It's unlimited uh, wants, uh, let's say, for experiences in terms of travel or education or uh, even the ability uh, to be in a position to help someone who's in need. It's not always just directed at me. Um, and as a matter of fact, most of the decisions that you and I make uh, very often involve doing things with other people or for other people. Certainly, we uh, think in terms of uh, doing things that will benefit not just ourselves, but our families, for instance, or maybe a, a significant other or some organization that we have a particular commitment to or obligation to. The fact remains, of course, that we all face, let's say, um, uh, limited resources, and we also recognize that we have we face priorities of obligations to ourselves, to our families, before, for instance, obligations we might have to someone else's uh, family. But anyway, uh, so it's about how we allocate scarce resources among competing and practically unlimited wants to achieve the greatest benefit. Uh, again, what economists have historically called utility. Economics really is about decision making. It's about how you and I choose to give up one thing in terms of another. And also, of course, you might recall from microeconomics, maybe from macro as well, that our decisions uh, reflect our values. Um, that is, uh, we, we're going to allocate resources to those, uh, those actions, to those goods, services that we perceive as giving us the greatest benefit. So uh, anyway, there's a lot to appreciate about uh, economics in terms of what it tells us about uh, how we think and how people make uh, decisions. Years ago, I remember Cal Thomas, the syndicated columnist, who said this. He said that uh, if you want to understand abnormal human behavior, study psychology. If you want to understand normal human behavior, study economics. Now, let me encourage you, uh, for purposes of this, to write that down in your notes right here. <laughs> Cal Thomas. The syndicated columnist said this, if you want to understand abnormal human behavior, study psychology. If you want to understand normal human behavior, study economics. Uh, when I look over your notes for the, uh, to see that you've completed these, I'm going to look for that statement. So uh, please make sure and write that down.
finance is the study of how that allocation, that is, how this, the, these decisions that we make in economics, that, how they're facilitated, that is, how they're made easier by the existence of financial markets, financial institutions, and financial instruments. Financial markets would, of course, include the stock market, the bond market. Most of us are familiar with some of the uh, measures or benchmarks, benchmarks of market performance like the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the Standard Poor's 500 Index or the NASDAQ, uh, whatever it might be. But financial markets, of course, those that arena where uh, financial assets are traded. Uh, we'll take a look at financial markets uh, later on. Financial institutions like banks and uh, credit unions, mutual funds, uh, also known as investment companies, and even insurance companies. Uh, they also engage in, let's say, well, they assist us in allocating resources uh, over time as well as at a given point in time. And then financial instruments, things like credit cards, stocks, bonds, um, certificates of deposit, student loans, <laughs> money itself. And so finance is about how this allocation, how our decision making is facilitated, how it's expanded. Uh, in some ways by the existence of these these three things, markets, institutions, and instruments. Finance is also related to accounting. Accounting is actually, you know, my background. I graduated from Harding with an undergrad degree in accounting, as well as one in Bible, and I went to work in public accounting uh, in Memphis for several years before going to get a master's degree and then coming back to Harding to teach. And so accounting really is where most of my work experience outside of education is. I worked as an auditor for a couple of uh, fairly large international accounting firms. Accounting is concerned with communicating financial information that is relevant to decision makers. The notion of relevant means it's uh, useful. It makes a difference, both internal, that is those inside the company, and those outside the company. Of course, the main concern about, certainly from an accounting perspective, uh, as far as financial statements go, the main concern is for suppliers of capital that is, the financial statements um, are really supposed to tell the, uh, reveal, let's say, the company's financial performance and position to uh, particular groups of people. But the main concern is suppliers of capital uh, and that uh, within the suppliers of capital, that group that's of greatest concern is the stockholders. So that's something to remember here, that the accounting profession, uh, primarily accounting, is about providing information useful to the owners of a business, primarily. Um, but accounting is primarily concerned with the past, and finance is concerned with the future. You know, our real focus is going to be uh, using financial accounting information in order to make decisions about the future, about uh, whether or not to invest in a particular company, or whether or not a particular company is struggling in one area versus another, so that we can hope to do something about that. And so there's an important difference. Uh, accounting is really a staff function that is all about trying to provide, provide information useful to decision makers. But the financial statements are not an end in themselves, ultimately. And it's something for many accountants maybe to, to help to, uh, well, to try to realize that uh, theirs is a staff function. And that information, when the financial statements are produced, the real work in one sense uh, just begins because decisions are going to be made based on that, uh, assuming the information is useful. So finance is a field of study that makes use of the concepts and theories of economics, as well as the information provided by accounting, to make decisions that will hopefully improve the position and performance. Tell you what, let me ask you again in your notes, circle those two words, position and performance of the firm, because we're going to see that again when we look at financial statements and we I've developed some tools like, say, ratio analysis tools. Uh, we're going to come back to those notions of position and performance. So circle those two terms, if you would, in your notes. By the way, I should add something here, too. It's not just a matter of concepts and theories. It's also an information. It's a matter of tools. There are certain uh, tools that we will use that come out of economics, certain types of analysis that come out of uh, or useful in accounting that we will draw on to, to be able to make better decisions, to make better use of the information that we have at our, at our disposal. Well, 
let's say that as we start a new enterprise, any kind of, uh, of enterprise, whether it, as you see here, is an athletic team that is uh, looking forward to a new season, whether it's a, a homeowner who's looking to expand their house or to have a major uh, renovation project, or maybe even to, uh, a builder who's looking to build a new, a new uh, structure, uh, a business venture, you know, you're starting a new business. You know, have to have some goals. A trip requires an itinerary. So it should be no great surprise that, in fact, in any serious endeavor, we need to know what success looks like. That's an important, I like the way, uh, you know, of expressing that. You know, you've got to ask yourself, what does success look like here? And it's something for you, by the way, individually and personally to say, what does success look like to you in terms of your uh, job opportunities when you graduate? You know, what kind of position do you hope to be in? Or where do you want to go? Um, what sort of opportunities do you want to have for advancement? You know, what do you, uh, are you looking for in terms of a family life, in terms of flexibility in your job and in your career? Um, these are important questions. So, you know, I like to think of what does success look like for you? Nobody else can tell you what that, what that is or what that necessarily should be. Um, well, anyway, I'm going to uh, cut this uh, video off right now and start number two in just a moment.